Hi everyone, my name is Rui and welcome to the Music Success Show. I have another guest, again from New York. He was born and raised in a small Italian neighborhood in the Bronx. Andrew's passion for music started early as three years old. He grew up performing covers at weddings, as well as performing in musical theater shows all around New York City. He has three original singles that have amassed over 150,000 streams across multiple streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and others. He had lines shows all around New York City in the live music scene. Andrew For Leon Forte, did I say this correct? Yes. Welcome Beautiful. to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for I, having I, me. I said it with a French accent, but that's... you know what? It sounded great. Actually, that's funny you say that because when I was growing up, everyone couldn't tell if it was French or Italian. And for for I mean, I knew it was Italian, but I didn't know how to say it because I used to say right. Leon Forte, and that's like more of the French way to say it. Exactly. So then when you say Leon Forte, it's more of the Italian way. So it's funny that you said it like that. There you go. Um, so tell us a little bit, uh, a little bit about yourself. How did you start in music, and why did you decide to be in this industry, which is not easy at all? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, yeah. So uh, I guess I'll go back to the beginning of how I even got the performance bug, right? Mm -hmm. So I was eight years old. I used to sing in the house before this and just make up random stuff. I mean, honestly, just like play a guitar that I did no idea how to play, um, and just make up random songs on the spot uh, for my mom and her friends. And then when I was eight, my dad was actually like, hey, he actually like can hold a pitch. Let's see if like what we could do about this. So he like brought one of our family friends and he like tested my pitch. He was like, yeah, he sounds great. And so he then um, brought me over to this Broadway like intensive camp for like young performers who were interested in Broadway. And that's how I got like introduced to the idea of like even becoming a performer or an actor or like any part of the arts. Um, and then so I did that for a long time. I was a professional actor, went to school for it. I always wanted to do songwriting. I never thought that I could. Mm. I always knew I was a good singer. I always knew, you know, I had the voice and everything. But I was just like, oh, no, I have to be that guy that someone songwrites for, you know. I, I have to be the artist that the record comes in and, and signs and then record label comes and signs and they're like, hey, okay, yeah, this person wrote this song, you're going to sing it. Um, and then about four years ago, I started songwriting. I just like took a stab at it. And mm -hmm. of course, the first song was not great, um, but, I, but I fell in love with it and I, and I created more songs. Uh, it first just started out with just me going on the piano because I, I taught myself how to play piano. And um, I would just go on the piano and like write what was happening in my life, just whatever frustrations, relationships, any anything of that matter. And oh. I would just put it out into the world or like onto my keys. Um, and then it wasn't I didn't start getting serious till about honestly, when the pandemic hit, because I was just before that, I was just creating it. Um, trying to learn as much as I could, you know, studying pop songs, uh, studying artists that I liked, uh, watching uh, tutorials on mixing and, and mastering and, and trying to like do all of that. Right. Uh, but I never felt like I didn't have a record that was like ready or anything like that because I didn't know anything about like creating a record that sounded like what you hear on the radio. And then. Uh, okay, well. So then I met uh, my producer and he uh, just took me to an entirely new level. Uh, they, they're, the loft, they're the Loft Sound Studio. His name is Donnie Klang. And there's a funny story of how I met them, if you want me to go into it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so, that, that was actually my next question. I mean, how did you get a, a, How did you develop, you know, from... From the uh, early beginnings, how, how did you get into the, the music scene? So, yeah. So, like I said, yeah, I created it on my piano, all of that. And then I always knew I needed a producer to bring me to the next level. Mm -hmm. I always knew, like, if I wanted to be the artist that I dreamed of and to, to, to replicate the careers that, you know, I've seen so many of my inspirations have, 
um, I knew that I needed an, a proper person that to produce and create music. And it was so weird because my dad's friend's daughter got married mm -hmm. and I wasn't invited. It was just my mom and my dad. However, my grandma was going like upstate and my mom was like, oh, well, I can't let her go by herself. I got to take her. So she took her and my dad in an extra like seat. And my dad was like, hey, do you want to come with me? I was like, yeah, I'm not going to leave you alone. Of course. Yeah. So you don't have to be alone. Absolutely. And then I, while I was there, I met this kid called uh, this. His name is John. Mm -hmm. uh, John, John Lafredo. I mean, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but sure. <laughs> okay. um, uh, but yeah, I met him and he worked with them. You know, he, he was a guitarist and he worked with them. And I showed him like some demos I would just make like on FL Studio, like nothing great, but just like, oh, you know, something, something was there. And I showed him, uh, I believe it was You and I, which was my first ever single. And I showed it to him like the first demo ever. Yeah. Um, and he was like, oh, this is really good. And he knew that if I had a proper producer behind me, this could be crazy. Right. So he was like, hey, you should check out the Loft Sound Studio. And he like recommended me and all that. And then I emailed uh, the studio and Donnie, Donnie Clang answered. Um, and, you know, he's been my producer ever since. And I've just been working with them. And we created You and I and then created No More and then created Heroes and created the new song that's coming out uh, like the end of February. All of that. And... It was just such a, like, none of this would have happened. I wouldn't even have been, like, doing music right. if it wasn't for that one instance of me going to a wedding that I had no business being at. <laughs> so <laughs> talking about, yeah, it. talking about karma, right? So, so it's very interesting because it seems like, in a way, uh, due, due to your collaboration uh, with him and uh, the people that you met at, at the wedding, um, mm -hmm. Would you say he was, he was some kind of sort of like a mentor that actually guide you through developing? Abs absolutely. I mean, he, I don't know if you know anything about Donnie, but he, uh, he was on this show called Making of the Band. Mm -hmm. um, and then he ended up having like a solo career and stuff like that. And now he's like, so he, now he's like just doing producing, right? And he's like right. doing artist um, creation. Uh, and he knew everything all the ins and outs about the business so when i would go to him and be like hey how do i get my song on spotify how, what do i have to do all of this he definitely mentored me and like taught me the ropes and was like okay you need to do this and you need to be signed with this and you need to go here and make this and do this and so he kind of guided me in that direction with the first like the first song he was like so this is all you need to do this is how you can can get everything that you've been working towards and then through that I then started researching stuff on my own, how to how to market myself, because when you're an upcoming artist, you wear so many different hats. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would definitely say he was like a mentor for sure. Awesome. Uh, can you explain to, to us like a little bit what is like your creative process? I mean, like you have a you have a great studio there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like how do you go about it do you, do you like how do you find inspiration uh, what's your process yeah so uh, absolutely I mean inspiration comes in all different forms uh, for like writing the song right because I've when you and I I wrote was just about like me and my music it was in the form of a love song and like people think it's like about some girl or like someone but um, no it's all just about me and my music and like how much I love my music and And that like you and I was like basically me to like my future fans, which crazy, like performing that was such like a full circle moment. But then there's other songs like Heroes where I like see the climate of the world and I'm like, I want to use my abilities and talent that I've been given to make a change in the world and do do something positive. Um, and then there's other times where I just was like, Hey, I just want to create a fun song. Like, I just want to make a fun song that, like, groove. So, inspiration wise, it comes in all different forms and it can strike at four, four in the morning or like nine at night mm -hmm. or like anything in between. You know what I mean? Um, but what I would do once I got the inspiration for the song, I would then use this, this keyboard right here, this MIDI keyboard. Uh, 
prod and joy right here. Um, I would plug this into, I have it on my computer and I plug it into Pro Tools. Okay. And then I would, I, I grabbed like some plugins that had like some instruments um, and I would just create them. You know, I just create like a, like a rough demo of what I wanted to do. Uh, beat wise, I would most likely have all the melody done and the lyrics done and like have like a very rough draft of the song, which just needed like way more production. And then I would then take that to Donnie at, at the Loft Sound Studio. And he would then take what I had and help me like make it so much bigger and so much more professional and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, I, I always have the ideas in my head. I just am, am not an instrumentalist, so I'll have a guitar part. And I mean, if I showed you my voice notes, it's crazy. Um, I'll just be talking into them when I get like an idea of a, a guitar part or a drum part because I don't play it, but I'll just like say it with my mouth. <laughs> um, and then Donnie, like the first time I met him with you and I, like he just pulled it right out of my head before I even like said it. So we were just such on like a like a the same wavelength that I would just now create all these like rough demos. And since I've created more rough demos, obviously they've they've gotten better over time. My rough demos start to get even better and better and better. And to the point where sometimes we can just take the stems of what I've created and we don't even have to add that much to it. Um, but basically I would take my my demos, bring it to the studio and uh, he would work his magic and we would work together. I also have another songwriter on my team uh, called Noah. Her name is Noah Danae. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, she actually helped with the new song, Something in the Air. And uh, yeah, I just would bring it to them and we would workshop it and create this masterpiece. Well, that that is quite something because I, I know that you have uh, you, you hold many hats, right? And and mm -hmm. from the musician's uh, perspective, uh, it's already a lot of work. I mean, you mentioned you, you have a team. It's a lot of, already a lot of work to 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 not only create your music but as well to 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 shape it as a product and then to get it out there so people can listen. Uh, yet you also do theater, right? So you have all these things going on. Um, how do you manage to do that? Because people talk about balance. I don't know if that's actually possible. Uh, um, I believe it's possible, but of course you have to make sacrifices. And, you know, with a dream as big as mine, you know, the bigger the dream is, the bigger the sacrifices have to be. Right. Um, and there have been times where I wanted to hang out with friends and I didn't because I had an audition due. Um, or I was like, no, I have to do, I have to meet with this guy about creating something for the song, or I have to do this, or I have to edit this video. Um, but I do believe that there is, I've noticed this is you have to have like some time, even if it's not even like a full day, like, let's say I get off the podcast today and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do any acting. I'm not doing music. I'm just going to go call up a friend, hang out, maybe even talk for a little bit. Let's say I don't go anywhere. I just talk, you know, keeping up the social network. Um, and I've, I've not lost friends, but I've grown apart from, from closer friends that, that uh, I used to have just because of my schedule and how crazy it's been. But I think there is a way to balance it. You just need to know how to prioritize. And I'm still learning that. I mean, it's very, very difficult. Um, but if you want something bad enough, then the sacrifices and the hard work and the late nights and early mornings, I just believe will pay off in the end. Absolutely. Uh, now, in terms of like um, the way you you do the work, let's say, uh, are you doing this full time or do you do you work? Do you have to work and then uh, prioritize your day so you can so, actually spend some time? creating and working with your team? So I would say I'm a full-time musician and a full-time actor mm -hmm. with a day job, <laughs> of course. But um, when I say full-time, I, I really do do this seven days a week. Even when I'm, if I come back, let's say I work as a retail associate. Um, and 
I'll come back from work and I might be tired or whatever, but I will sit down or edit and edit a video or create some sort of content for music or write a song. Um, so the day job, honestly, I never had to do a day job before the pandemic. Thank the Lord. Um, but once I started really getting into music and wanting to make these productions, I mean, something in the air, the music video is insane. Um, and there was a lot of budget that went into that. And you got to get that budget from somewhere. Yes. Um, and while music pays, it's not paying enough to, to get there. Not yet, at least. Um, so I have to do that day job in order to sustain my music career. But it's not like I do music as a hobby. It's more like I do the day job as a hobby just to get more money, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of like the music business, right? Let's talk about that. We talk about creation, and we definitely will 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 talk about uh, your mm -hmm. your releases coming up. Um, in terms of uh, music industry, music business, how do you see the music industry nowadays? What's your viewpoint? So it's definitely changed. I mean, uh, I'll just say what I've been told from people who've been in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, today and now for me i think i might have thrived a little bit more in the older one and only because i say this is because i've been told because of my talent that i might have already been signed by now um but because i can't and while 150,000 streams is great um it's still nowhere near enough to get a, a label or anyone especially with the climate of tiktok um I mean, honestly, if you don't have 100,000 on TikTok, like you really can't do anything label-wise. That being said, there is a whole new wave of independent artists who are realizing that you don't need a label. Um, and, I, and I fluctuate. There are times where I'm like, I'd love a label and times where I'm like, you know, this is fine being independent. Um but everyone starts at independent and a label, hopefully a label, if you want a label, comes to you and it's the right deal and then you take it, of course. But I will say what TikTok has done and social media has done is made the playing field level mm -hmm. where anyone can create anything and with enough backing and enough support, they, they don't need anyone to be like, you, there's no more gatekeepers in a sense. The right. gatekeepers is just kind of like the algorithm, let's say, of TikTok or YouTube, which, you know, if people could figure that out. And some people have, and they've done great. Um, and that's what I've been investing a lot of my time into is, okay, how can I figure out this algorithm? Uh, because I want to get my music seen. And so it's a little hard because of the oversaturation uh, in the market of the music industry today, especially with, I think the pandemic plus TikTok has created more singer and songwriters uh, just for the fact of like people were at home and they didn't know what to do. And a lot of people turned to, you know, songwriting and stuff like that. And so there's a lot of competition there. And so because of that, you kind of have to cut through the noise and find a way to stand out from everyone else. So it's good in some places and it's tough in others. Yes. And, and, like and, good for other people. and, and that brings me to, to a question because it's like you said, you know, the, 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 the playing field is uh, level now. Um, mm -hmm. The interesting thing is like, uh, in spite of the fact that either you go independent or you want to sign a record deal, you still have to do the work because it, 100%. it is the same work, right? It, uh, there are 100%. people, there are people who will go the independent uh, route, which will still need the the, the views and the likes and the, and the streaming. And uh, there are others that want to sign a record deal. They'll still have to do the same thing. So either way, I have to do that. Um, yeah. That no, there's there, the days of, of record labels curating artists. I mean, if you want to count him, I believe Justin Bieber was like the last artist that was like curated. By a, by a label, you know, he, I mean, he had a little bit of whatever on YouTube, but the label is what pushed him, marketed all of that. Nowadays, the label wants you to have a fan base. This way they just go, here's this amount of money. Use this money to market to your fan base. And we already have your fan base. So we don't have to do as much work. Yes. And it's, 
that's they, that's where the climate is on the legal side. Yeah, they basically act like a like a bank, right? It's uh, exactly like a bank. It's like you're getting a loan. Exactly. A bad loan, if I may say. <laughs> a bad loan. Uh, uh, now, in terms of um, like what what's what has been the best advice you have received in the music industry? Wow, that is that's a great question. Oh man, that is so tough. There's a lot of good advice that I've I've received. Um I would probably say the best advice that I've gotten is to stay true to myself mm-hmm. and uh and don't let as much as you focus on the numbers and you focus on you know oh, this didn't get X amount of views or this didn't get X amount of streams and you kind of feel like you failed or whatever, like you kind of have to not take it personal and start to develop like a thicker skin. So I guess this wouldn't like be the best advice necessarily, but the best thing I've learned necessarily is just being true to myself and um, really loving what I've created. And then if I love what I create, then hopefully other people will like what I create. And it's just kind of like, I guess the biggest thing is be your number one fan and be your harshest critic at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there's a lot of people that can boost themselves up and then not see the flaws. And there's other people that can only see the flaws. uh, And I I tend to do that a lot. Um, And then not boost themselves up enough or not feel like they're good enough or anything like that. And the the whole thing is like if you don't love your music, then how do you expect other people to love your music? You know, right? Like, now, I will listen. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I will. I will listen, and my friends laugh at me, but I will listen to my songs, especially like songs that haven't been released yet, over and over and over again. Play them in the car. My friends like you are bopping to your own song. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I'm my biggest fan. I love my songs. You know. So I think if you have that energy then you, you'll win. That's a great advice. Now, you seem to be a person that is pretty much hands-on on your career and uh, you're on the ball, I, I can tell. Like, what do you feel um, is, um, is are your best traits uh, that make you so far successful and, mo- and moving forward? What do there's, you a lo- there's a lot. But I think the best, I'll just give you my best trait. and Traits or, or habits? A habit, same. Yeah. So I think this is like one and the same, this. And I say it, I don't give up. And it's sometimes I hate myself about it, but I will not give up. I I will maybe get, even in acting, right? We talked about acting. I might not get a job or whatever, and I might get frustrated for like three hours. And I'm like, okay. Back, back to the drawing board. Let's do that. And same thing with music. Okay, that song didn't do well. All right, let's figure out what happened and let's keep going because I'm not going to give up. That's just, I don't give up. I never give up. So I think like that's that's been the biggest driving trait of me being successful and being able to find people who want to invest in me um, and be able to create a team around me is, is the fact that people see my passion and my relentlessness. I think... I really truly have a passion for music. I don't just do this for for any other gain except just because I I want to create music into the world and and use my talents to hopefully change the world in a positive way and make my mark on the world any way I can. Um so I would say like my passion and and my drive and my tenacity um have uh gotten me to where I am and will continue to push me further in this career. Awesome. And uh, what what do you feel has been your breakthrough moment? I mean, or a series of breakthrough moments where you feel now this is mm-hmm. moving. So, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, good. There's so many levels to it. Um, my song, No More, got on a radio station. And it was crazy to hear like, you're listening to blah, blah, blah radio and blah, blah, blah. And then they do this whole thing. And then no more comes on and i'm like oh my god that's me on the radio after like a whole record like that was a crazy moment the moment where um my new song heroes 
I went to sleep and it was at like 2,000 views. And I woke up and it was at 4,000 overnight. So I, it gained 2,000 views overnight, which doesn't seem like a lot. But for someone my level, 2,000 views with absolutely no promotion behind it was like, whoa, what is happening? And then my other single, No More, hit like 11K views on YouTube. And my first single hit 20,000 views on Instagram. Yeah. And after that first single came out, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then people were commenting, oh, my God, how are you not famous? How have I not found you? Where have you been all my life? All that. And I'm just like, whoa. I never even knew I would have this impact on people. I literally have had people message me on Instagram. And this is probably my favorite part. The views and everything are great. But when you actually get that message of like, I listened to your song and I was in such a bad place. And that song just like made me smile and just gave me some hope. And I was like, wow, that's all I want to do. And that is worth a million streams and a million likes and even a million dollars. Honestly, because at the end of the day, I'm in the business of connecting people. And that's like my passion is just like connecting with people. And I, when I was younger, I had dark, dark places. I struggled, struggled with mental illness. I'm sure a lot of artists have. Um, And music was the one thing saving me. So I wanted to be that savior for someone else. That's very cool, Andrew. That's very cool. Um, you you uh, go uh, several times uh, talk about your your uh, team. Now, do you have like some kind of advice in terms of, let's say, somebody starting today in in the music industry and they you know they are songwriter or like yourself, mm -hmm. they 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 want to they want to do well. They don't want to just dwell in the sea of music out there. What mm -hmm. What should they do? What is your advice for them to move forward? Absolutely. So first, I would say evaluate why you want to be in it. Truly, because it is a lot of work. And if you don't have a passion for it, and if you don't love every second, even the, the tough parts, I mean, you don't love the tough parts, but if you don't love sitting there writing songs and love performing and stuff, and you're trying to do it for a fame or a fortune or money, I said fortune, but you know, any of, any of those, then there are so many other things you could do that will net you that, um, sure. without, this is a lot of work and I, same with acting It is a lot of work. So first I would say, if you want to get into it, make sure you actually want to do it. That's number one. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed. Number two is, I mean, have a strategy. Maybe. There's a, I, I spent 75% of my time researching other artists, listening to other artists, listening to genres that I might not even be like perfect in, but I'll look at an artist. I mean, a perfect example is Kid Leroy or Tate McRae or um, Mimi Webb, um, people who like blew up on TikTok. Um, and I would look at them and try to be like, okay, why did that work? all of that, right? So I would take the time to really research and and try to figure out why certain things are working for other artists and try to see how you can make it your own, obviously, don't rip them off, but um, try to figure out how you can make, um, how you can do what they've done in your own way. Um, and then the third thing, which is probably the most important thing, and I actually said it first, Well, the first one's passion, but the third one is like, um, know what you're trying to say in every song. Um, I make it a point that every song has a message or a feeling or something. Like I know what I want my listener to feel like when they listen to that song or to, to get, to understand. And I think that kind of music will resonate with so many people. Because you truly are focusing on the listener and not yourself, not anything else, but just truly figuring out what that listener wants, what that listener needs. Um, that would be probably like my three big advice.
That's pretty good advice. Uh, talking about uh, music you love, what's your favorite album of all time? Oh, God, that's so hard. Wow. Uh, I, I know it's a hard question. Oh, my. Oh, that's so tough. Yeah. Favorite album of all time. Wow, that's such a big... That's so hard. I, I don't even know. Um, I mean, I guess I'll say... I my favorite artist of all time for me is Shawn Mendes. Mm -hmm. um, Why? I just resonate with him, and you know, with, for, you know, I know there's there's other artists that have done so much more, and I'm not, you know, knocking them or whatever. I think they're all amazing, right? There's credible artists, but for some reason, Shawn just always like connected with me, mm -hmm. and. I don't know, maybe I, I saw myself in him or, or something, but his music always touched me. Um, and the first album that I listened to his was Illumin... Oh, my God. I'm going to get this name wrong, and I want to get it right. That's okay. Um, Shaman. Yeah, I was right. Illuminate. Um, uh, and just... I don't know, just the music really resonated with me. I mean, even the even the song Understand, mm -hmm. I think is is so uh well done. Um Yeah, that's like such hard. I guess Illuminate would be I don't know if that's like my best album of all time, favorite album of all time, but it's probably the one that I've listened to the most in my entire life. Um just because uh yeah, I just I love I love Sean. I listen to all his al albums. Like he would be my number one artist. Like if I had a dream artist to collaborate with, if he ever saw this, Sean, I would love to collaborate with you. <laughs> yeah. Here is the message from Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now you created a song for uh, Frontline Workers. Yes. Which is called Heroes. You want to yes. talk a little bit about that? So, please? yeah. So the pandemic hit. We were in the pandemic. Uh, this was the start of last year. Um, I got the inspiration for the song. And it was, I saw my mom and my brother both work in healthcare. Um, and they were both on the front lines. Uh, my brother would give out uh, M95s to nurses without him having his own M95. Um, and this was like before vaccines or anything like that. And I just realized there were so many of these unsung heroes for these nurses, these these firefighters, even these these army these army people that that are just army veterans um, that are just doing so much without really being recognized, and I wanted to create something that you know truly resonated with the world and and them and and you know talk about how um, how much they do and thank them for for all the hard work that they've done because. I talk about music being hard, but that is a different level. And absolutely, it's just honestly, and so many volunteers too that just did it. Like they they are heroes, and I I wanted to to incorporate that in a song. I wanted to to create something that was above myself, and that wasn't for myself, and it was for them, and for and for um you know, pushing the message of how hard they work and how much they deserve to be loved and and how they are heroes in, in everyday heroes, firefighters, you know, uh, EMT, nurses, all of that. That's very cool. And I, th I think that's a, a pretty good uh, thing to do to acknowledge the people who actually are Absolutely. wasting their lives for, for the rest of us. Um, you you talk about uh, your creation method before. I, I got to ask you, what, what's your favorite music tool that you use? My favorite music tool? Yeah. Uh, Pro Tools, <laughs> probably. Um, I would say Pro Tools is 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 my favorite DAW. Mm -hmm. um, but this MIDI keyboard, this is my baby. This has saved my life um, so many times. Because I, I will not know what to do, and then I'll like come here and I'll go, oh, what's that chord? And then I'll play it, 
And so I think the most I use and my favorite is definitely this this bad boy right here. It's yep. the MIDI keyboard. Awesome. Uh, you have a new song coming out. Uh, let's talk about yes. that. Uh, something in yeah. uh, it's going to come out in the end of uh, February. Yep, end of February. Uh, we're looking to do that. Uh, so yeah, this was so I've made a lot of ballads. Uh, you know, with heroes and you and I. Uh, no more was like an up tempo pop song, but not like super up tempo. This song is extremely up tempo. Uh, this is a dance song where I just want to pump you up and like let's just have fun. Like this is just a have fun song. Um, it was about you know just enjoying a moment and just letting it be just a moment. Um, and this is part of a of a, a song series idea that I have of like I want to do a part one, part two, part three, like music video. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but um so this song is all just about like having fun. And the crazy thing about this song that is that I created this song like back in I created Heroes and then like I created the demo of Heroes, I should say. And then I created the demo of this song like a month after, not even. Um, and everyone around me was always like, write a fun song. You always write ballads. Write a fun song. Write a fun song. Write a fun song. I'm like, okay, all right. So obviously, like I said, I'm always into like, okay, what do people need? And I And I knew that we were in this pandemic. And everything is so dreary um, and dark. And we didn't see a way out. So I was like, let me just create something where people could just forget for three minutes that we're in what we're in. Mm -hmm. And we can just have fun, pop our heads, enjoy music, enjoy some crazy vocals, because there are some crazy vocals in this, um, and just have a good time. And then... I want to talk a little bit about how the music video happened is when I was looking to create this song and heroes, I wanted to create a, a music video for heroes originally. And I still do. I just need more funding for that. I wanted to create like a full blown video of, um, you know, showing all these frontline workers and what they're going through and like really showing people like, Hey, this is the stuff you don't see. And I wanted to do that. Um, and it's a funny story because I met my creative team. When I talk about my team, I have a, also like a creative team. So I have my production team on one side, like making songs and stuff. And then I have like my branding, like creative team, right? That helps me with my music videos and the image and, you know, all of the album work and everything like that. And I met this guy on a bus um, coming over from work like crazy. And I was just talking to my friend. I was with my friend and I met him after work. We hung out and then we missed the bus. We had to wait, took another bus. I was just talking, I'm like, yeah. And I was talking with this guy and he gave me crazy amount of money. And I was like, and I was like, I can't do that. And he just popped up. He was like, hey, I know a videographer like that. And then so I just met him. Uh, it's Peter, PMR sales. I got to give him a shout out. I promised him I would. Um, and the guy who did this music video is director Gambino. And he's done like a lot of artists music videos. Um, but we we were like trying to find a place for a good three weeks and we got a place and then it dropped and we got a place and it dropped and we got a place and it dropped. And we were like stressing, 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 stressing. And then don't know how this happened, but we ended up getting a very upscale brownstone that we were actually able to shoot in. And it was crazier than any of the houses we were looking at. Because like I said, I don't have a budget for a brownstone. Like, that's crazy. Um, but the way that we got it was just, like, insane. And and uh, uh, counting my blessings that that even happened. Um, but, yeah. So we, we shot it in there. I got, like, background people. I was, like, a casting director for, like, two days. Because my friend was like, hey, put it on your casting website where I get all my auditions. I was like, oh, yeah. Let me just do that. And I, like, got background people and all that. And I was, like a whole facilitator of the shoot. When I talk about wearing different hats, I was like the casting director and the producer and the director and all of these things. Um, 
and I'm just really, really excited for people to 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 hear it and and see it. I think it's gonna be ooh, voice crack. I think it's gonna be um super fun. I think people will super enjoy it. And like I said, if you love like Justin and if you love like Sean, um you're you're gonna love this song. You're gonna awesome. love it. Andrew uh, Leon Forte, what is music success for you? Music success? What do you mean by that? Like, like what? What is to have music success in your life? Mm, it's a very, very deep question. Um, obviously, one of the things would be definitely be able to sustain just doing music, right, in my life, and. I mean, one of my goals is definitely to be um, topping the charts and, you know, performing all over the globe. I want to tour the globe and, and do that and touch as many hearts as I can. Um, but success for me um, is just being able to to leave an impact on the world, I think, is like is my biggest thing is like leave a positive impact, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. Um, leave a positive impact because I've been given this gift and I want to use this gift to, to leave an impact and hopefully make the world better. So when I'm a hundred and I leave this planet, um, you know, at least I'll be like, I did, you know, I did good. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess success is, is that it's a big one. Um, I mean, I'm already successful if you, if you want to call it that too. Like I'm doing what I love and that's, that's the big thing. Right. So I think like, it's so hard. It's such a hard question. Um, it, for me, it, whatever it is for you, it's every, everybody answers this differently. Mm, so whatever it is, for I you, mean, it's totally fine. You know, I just, I just want to be able to touch hearts around the globe. I think after I've done that, I'd like to think that I've succeeded yep. and I won't stop till I do that. Um, of course I will accept small successes along the way, but um, until I can touch as many hearts as I possibly can, um, as feasibly possible, then I don't know if I've achieved the success that I've won. <laughs> That's awesome. Andrew, it was a pleasure to have you here on the, sh on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And for, uh, you know, sharing your time and wisdom. Absolutely. And successes and uh, travails. And uh, for everybody that is listening to the show, um, we truly uh, enjoy connecting with you. So if you would like to um, get all the resources and links to this episode, the only thing you need to do is to actually type the guest's name in a search bar. And this episode, along with all the show notes, will pop right up. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Andrew, actually, before we go, I would like mm -hmm. to ask, how can people connect with you? Oh, Just so many things. Um, you could follow my YouTube um, and follow my journey and be a part of that. Um, you know, I'm doing all these vlogs and showing like the process of how I create music and, and everything that goes into that. And I want to start as I get bigger, creating like an actual membership program where um, you know, more fans can can get um, to see like the real like nitty gritty, like, hey, this is what I'm doing. And, and um, this is where I went from here and here. And if I could do it, that's the biggest thing. If I could do it, you could do it. That's what I want. That's what I want to be, you know. And so you could you could connect with me on YouTube, Instagram, Spotify. What's your handle? Uh, Instagram probably is the, the easiest. All way. of them. If you just search up Andrew Leon Forte, mm -hmm. and oh, I say it's Andrew, and then think Leon, and then think Forte, and then make it one word. Um, then you'll be able to find me everywhere: Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, um, Spotify, Apple Music. But yeah, follow follow me on all those. Um, Twitter as well. You know, I'm always tweeting. I love connecting. So yeah, yep. thank you, you so check much. Them all out. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show, for being so generous with your time. It was a Absolutely. Pleasure. I wish you all uh, the luck and all the success. Uh, thank you, thank you. Hope you come back and tell us more in the future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, to all our listeners uh, and viewers on YouTube, 
I'd like you guys to remember that uh, we want you to be successful because your success is really our success. And don't forget to live your dreams. Stay safe until the next episode. I'll Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. That's right. Don't give up. That's right. See you soon.